This channel is supported by my online fishing courses, and you can learn more and get significant discounts at saltstrong.com skinner. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, and if you like this video, please hit the like button, and if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. Okay, I've got the hand controller out for the trolling motor and uh, watching the fish finder and just trying to get on top of the structure, which is uh, real easy doing it this way. And it's got a couple buttons on there, faster, slower, left, right, and uh, there's an anchor button, and there you go. I'll just hit that anchor button. There's the rock showing up on the fish finder, and uh, we'll get going. Um, so, hey, there's a boat rod, that black one up against the gunnel. That's for uh, shooting some underwater video, and I'll share a little bit of that uh, in a bit. Otherwise, yep, cutting a green crab. And uh, yeah, if you've been following my videos uh, it's a couple of weeks ago, my fingers got burned from handling these. And uh, it turned out to be from leaving them in the garage in a bucket um, and instead of having them in the water where they're constantly getting washed. And if there was any doubt about that, um, there's not any more because my friend uh, John Halkius also burned his fingers, and uh, it turned out the crabs he was using also were not in the water. Uh, yeah, they kind of secrete fluids on top of each other, and they burn. Okay, waiting, waiting, waiting. A lot of little taps. You know, wait for that jig to move. Wait for that rod to move, and then set the hook. Here it comes. There we go. That squeak was the line rubbing up against the rock. Hmm. You are lucky. So I've got the leader on the rock there. You're going back. A nice one. Yeah, I'm telling the fish it's lucky because I'm not keeping any of this trip. I've uh, done a bunch of black trips recently. I have fish in the fridge, don't need any of this trip. So the plan is to catch a few, get some underwater video, and uh, then I'm going to see if I can find some stripers. Yeah, you heard that line squeaking up against the structure, so I'm checking the leader. And uh, yeah, it's got a little uh, light damage, so you can see I'm pulling on both ends trying to make sure that it's not going to snap on me. And that's so important to stay on uh, top of that leader. Make sure that it's not getting roughed up because, yeah, every, every decent fish like heads for structure, and um, you don't want to have a really big one on there and have to worry that the leader's not going to hold. Something nice about the blackfish portion of this trip is the lighting is just right to have contrast of the rod uh, against the water. So you'll be able to see like every tap and uh, be able to see how many bites I'm not reacting to uh, until that jig moves. And I'm using a three quarter ounce jig and you definitely need to strive to go as light as you possibly can. Uh, generally I'm using between a half and one ounce, occasionally an ounce and a half, but I won't go above uh, one ounce on this trip. And staying light uh, definitely helps you feel the fish better and they just seem more uh, likely to pick up the jig and go with it. So these are the same jigs that I use in the springtime when I forgy fish. So 
Uh, this works out great. If there are some large porkies around, uh, I'm going to catch those too. So I'm leaving the shell on the crab. Uh, my reasoning is that there are so many little fish down there. We're going to get to see that when I uh, go to the underwater video. And I think leaving the shell on protects the main bait from all of those little bait stealers pretty much. But there are trips uh, where I take the shell off when the bite is much lighter than this is. Right now, you, know, you put down and you immediately have action. Um, you know, sometimes. It, in different places it's not like that and I've seen where if you leave the shell on you're just not getting the bites it's like you need to take that shell off in order to get those fish to hit and commit it's just you know it seems strange to me but um, yeah that's the way it is so the shell stays on here and uh, in an, a, a video that I'll post in another few days or a week or so uh, you know I'm gonna show where I'm always taking that shell off now I always cut the legs off because the legs create drag, both when you're dropping it to the bottom and when it's down there in this current, um, I, I definitely want to reduce drag and be able to use as light a weight jig as possible and uh, taking the legs off will help me do that. Okay, this is where that contrast of the rod against the water is going to be nice. Uh, I'm going to wait a relatively long time to set the hook on this one, uh, but you'll be able to see I'm just waiting through those taps. And you can see that I'll move the jig there. And I moved it because I wasn't getting any hits. You, you'll see on the underwater video, there, there's things that, you know, the jig can fall into and the fish won't see it. So if I don't get a hit right away or within, you know, 10 seconds or so, I'm definitely going to move it. That foul hook is going to be a good one. Oh, I think it's a good one. I'm glad I just changed the leader. Of course, now he's got the camera rod. That is big boy. Oof. So getting good underwater video for this is very difficult to get the camera angled correctly. It's looking the wrong way here. It's looking straight up, but it's kind of neat. You see the fish swimming over it, but that shadow on the surface, that's the boat. So I think it's interesting that uh, down at the bottom, the boat shows up very clearly. So they not only hear what you're doing up there, uh, they see the shadow. Whether it impacts anything, uh, it doesn't seem to. They seem to feed uh, quite happily, but yeah, uh, that's the boat up there. Okay, so I'm going to save the bulk of the underwater video for another time. Elsa's video is going to get too long. Uh, but hey, this is what's going on down there. This is what the bottom looks like. My God, there's a million little fish there. This is why uh, 
you need to wait through all of those taps. So what are they? Most of them, the small ones, are uh, small sea bass. There's also some bergals. There's small blackfish, although I don't see any here uh, right at this moment. There are porgies around also. Um, but, yep, there are uh, a lot of fish there. There's a lot of life. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the view from the bottom. All right, now I realize there are some porgies on this clip. Uh, there's one that, one that moves along and stops. Uh, it was off to the right of the screen. We'll see another one. Most of them are tiny porgies. They call them pin porgies. Uh, and they're just excellent bait stealers. And, uh, yeah, so there's porgies, sea bass, bergals. Blackfish, there's a porgy. Uh, the blackfish got in the way, but um, there was one passing through in the back. So, yep, plenty of life. So like I said, I'll save the, the rest of the underwater video for another time. But, yeah, I could, I could just watch this stuff all day. It's so interesting. These sea bass are so curious. They just go right up to the camera and look at things. You know, blackfish are the same way. Um, I've watched a lot of underwater video. They're curious creatures, and uh, you know something about blackfish is blackfish attract other blackfish. That's why um, the idea of building the bite. You know, you're not. It's not that you're chumming. It's that you're trying to get a couple of blackfish around, and that will attract others. Yeah, right. There seems to be schools of stripers every day. So uh, gonna go out look for some birds and by the way this is the beginning of November but I can tell you that on the day before I published this video the surface stripers were still going strong in the exact same area this is uh, eastern Long Island Sound lots of fish up on top um, the day prior to this publication um, yep they seem to be there every day and there are bluefish mixed in okay I'm just trying to motor up uh, a little quietly on them don't want to scatter them too much. There are multiple schools and I'm uh, just pulling up on one of them now. All right, so the first hookup is a small bluefish, and uh, but most of the fish have been bass. You're going to see, hopefully you can see it. Yeah, it just spit up tiny, tiny bait. They're small uh, bay anchovies, probably like an inch long. And uh, fish can get pretty picky when they're on those things, but uh, yeah, these seem to be feeding pretty well.
All right, as I mentioned, there are multiple schools. There are also multiple boats. There are probably six or seven boats doing uh, exactly what I'm doing in this general area. So uh, what I'm trying to do is just find schools that don't have any other boats on them. Okay, I lost the bait strip there. It's an outer tail bait strip. You know, I really need to get in the habit of double hooking these things. If you do that, uh, it's pretty hard to lose them. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm still in that <laughs> pork rind mode of just hook it on there and go. Uh, what I should do is fold it over one more time. See, it's, it's tough. I mean, it goes on there really firm. But uh, after you catch a bunch of fish, it opens the hole up a little bit. So if you fold it over on itself and hook it a second time, it's uh, less likely to get lost. Okay, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. Thank you.